Well, hello, folks. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo T.A. wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time after I show just one question, what happened today, and what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Archived on YouTube, it's under the channel L.A. Little. You can subscribe there on the YouTube site. It's up on the right-hand corner. Uh, just click on the button, subscribe. You'll get notification each time content is pushed. And we do push a lot of content. So, um, you know, check it out. Uh, subscribe and be one of those that uh, receive notifications. Uh, so you don't forget. And so it's nice and easy. You just click on it and you're right there. As far as these markets, uh, click, 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 right? They don't want to go down. But they're having a hard time going up. Uh, last night I was talking about that, you know, we could get a pullback at any time. Uh, we actually did get a small pullback here, 10 points on the NDX, uh, just under a point on the composite. So really nothing of significance, a point and a half on the SPX. Uh, Dow Jones, Russell's, uh, they both ended higher on the day, just barely. So pretty much a flat day when you look at it that way, but as we'll look at here in a minute, it actually tells a different story when we look at the charts. Gold up uh, four and a half bucks, not that much, but did get a decent spike in the gold stocks. Silver had the bigger move, 1.7% higher. Oil inventory numbers come out, look horrid. Saudi Arabia says that it looks like demand's picking up and this thing pops three and a half percent. I was telling one of the traders in the uh, teaching trade room today that, uh, you know, he was talking about the, the fact that inventory numbers horrid and you see price go up and my point was is that well yeah you know it's always about ebb and flow it, more than likely it's just a short covering rally but you know at this particular point in time there's too many people short enough already unwilling to pay down and when you look at that uh, that USO chart or any of the all uh, derivative charts today you'll see and I'll pull up the, the USO here for you. You'll see there was a spike down on that news. Let me grab this chart for you right quick. Here's the spike down on the news. And what does it do? It can't hold and it goes up from there. If you actually pull this back a little bit, pull it back about five days, you can see right down here you had a very clear delineation, right? That line. That, that had been holding. When they broke it down there, and now we'll zero in on it a little bit, when they broke it down, you could see, and we'll pull it into here, you could see right in here, this was the break. If we move this up now, that was the line, right? That was the break. Inventory numbers come out, does a hammer reversal, huge volume, but it hammers back up and then it takes off and you know ends up on the day. That's the way things trade. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it trades sometimes. And, you know, if you're going to intraday trade something like that, you have to recognize when you see that. And I did call it out. Uh, actually, one of the traders called out this. I talked about, you know, that, you know, I, I had, I actually did not get into the trade, uh, but uh, I know a couple members did. And then we had a target of about 1845, hit that target on that spike pulls back and then it goes up and almost gets to the next target uh, which we called we called it at 18 uh, or right at 1900 got up to 18 what is that 1880 1880 so fell a little short of that one looks like it's going to get there tomorrow though it looks like where it's trying to head about 1890 1900 up to about 1920 so anyway all little spike up today nothing big but you know overall flat day Let's go to the let's go to the charts though because the charts actually tell us something a little a little different, and that is is that you have an over under today. Now it turns out that it's not a two bar reversal; it's just an over under. What's an over under? Well, that's where you go over the prior day, back underneath it, but you have heavier volume. In this case, you got 33.1 versus 31.9, so you go over, back under. You know, sometimes that leads to a setback, especially when you've had this kind of a move, it could. Uh, if you go back just to the last time you had one was right here, and that was after this big move up. 
So you go over, back under, you had more volume. You can see it here, right? Over, back under, more volume. You get one day retrace and then you're back the other way. I suspect this one is probably set up about the same way. May, may, may make it back to that consolidation area, which is about 2,000, excuse me, 2,100, uh, that little consolidation. Uh, it may even make it back to the swing point high, but more than likely they're going to buy about 2102, somewhere up in there, it'd be my guess. That's the S&Ps, that's about 10 points. Well, let's see where it closed. Yeah, it's about uh, 13, 13, 14 points down. Max, probably about 10 to 12 uh, on average. That's the S&P 500. Let's look at the other indexes and see how they shape up. And let me grab my watch list and let's pop over here and look at the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ, okay, so that's 49.71.18 yesterday and 49. Yeah, so you go over, back under, and you got less volume. So that's actually, oh no, it actually has slightly more volume. Isn't that funny how it works, right? It's, it's almost like, it's just almost like the market knows that it's going to go up again, right? It just gets a little bit more volume, creates an over-under, and uh, that's after a huge stretch. We were talking about it last night, right? You had 10 bars up in a row. So today, you actually break that string, and you break it by, you know, 0.95 per, uh, cents, you know, not even a full buck, uh, but slightly more volume. So it says this thing can also do the same thing as the S&P, working this one, pull back to, uh, it's not really clear looking at it, so I'm not gonna try to make a guess. It would be total guess. Now the NDX looks a little different, certainly a clearer, because it was 10 down today, a clearer doji, that one definitely says it wants to try to pull back on the over-under. That one also is gonna be hard to get a read. I wouldn't think it'd get past 43.97 on the downside. You're sitting at 44.40, that's 40 something points. That would be a pretty good decline. That's, um, you know, 1%. So we'll see if it can get a 1% decline or not, but that's uh, the way that one is also set up. And let's see about the, the uh, Russell. So the Russell goes over, back under, same scenario. And the Russell also has more volume. So we have the same setup here. So right across the indexes, everyone I'm telling you exactly the same thing. And that is, is, yeah, we can get a little pullback tomorrow, but it's probably not going to last very long. So that's the way that looks. Let's uh, pop in and see if the sectors look the same. And as you can probably tell, uh, I didn't do my homework tonight, so I'm kind of doing it on the fly here with you. So let's just take a quick look at these. So IBB stretches up, has volume, doesn't get to the top. Uh, that's going to try to consolidate some more. ITB, I saw this pulled back today. That was after that crazy spike up yesterday. No volume though. Uh, that's probably just going to consolidate. Let's look at the IYT, which broke out yesterday. Goes over, back under, has more volume. These are all set up the same as the indexes. How about the SOX? So the SOX goes over and stays over. Eh, that doesn't look right. Is that right? No, we don't have the quotes on it today for some reason. Uh, let's pop over here and grab a quote so we can see what it actually did. I think it actually went over and back under today. And 97, no, it didn't quite get to the high. Had less volume, so that's just consolidation. Uh, let's keep going here. XLB, that's an over under less volume. So that's actually, that's actually a two bar reversal. So that's the only one I've seen so far. That one says it's going to come back. Right, the odds are pretty high this is actually going to come back. And we don't even have, yeah, we don't have a, we don't, have, we don't even have a B point yet. That's the A stretch from there to there. So assuming it comes all the way back to here, that would be your B point setting up the next move. So uh, that was a nice run on the XLB. So XLB set up a little differently, two bar reversal. XLE, so energy sector still hanging up there. Energy is going to try to test some more. Um, I just don't think it's going to get very far. It, on the weekly, it could test up to about 85.90. So, you know, it, it still could do a farther test. 
but it's a real struggle up here. XLF. Okay, so XLF was trying to make a move higher, and it does a, a reversal, but it's not a two bar given the way it's set up. Uh, because for me, a two bar is where you have an extended move, right, into an over under that's on lighter volume. Well, this was extended here, but it's not anymore. I mean, it's going sideways enough now to not be extended. So that's just a, a failed test of the highs, wants to pull back a little bit. XLI, the industrials, they also were trying to break out, and they're still hanging. So they'll still look okay. And that actually, well, actually, let's hang on a second. That's a failure at the highs too, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So that's just like the XLF. That also is a failure at the highs, wants to pull back. XLK, and that was just an inside bar, it looks like and doesn't tell us anything. Inside bars never tell me much of anything. So let's keep going. XLP and that one's over under also not extended so that's a failed test of the or did it get over? 49.95 actually got to the same price. So that that to me looks like a failed test at the highs or on, on yesterday's highs. Uh, could pull back a little bit. Not that big a deal. XLU, that one actually does pull back. This looks like it's going to come test the lows again. Now you got volume down here at these lows. So this little 45 area looks pretty critical on XLU. XLV, so this one does a doji, has more volume, but it's an inside. No, it's not. So this tested, well this is an interesting one. So you don't, you don't see this all that often. This is kind of an interesting one to look at. So this bar has this much volume right here, right? The top, I mean, excuse me, the top of that bar is, uh, let's get that price point, 72.21, and you trade into 72.10 on the low today. And on today's bar, you have more volume. Now on today's bar, you also did not test the tops, right? So that says this thing's gonna try to pull back and probably try to come back in and do a retest regen off these prior highs. So XLV looks like it's going to try to come in. XLY, let's see what that one looks like. <laughs> Talk about a stretch. Uh, this should be done. 69. That's about 430, 76, 70. And got to 76.52. This one, you know, I would not be jumping into this. This looks like it's just about done what it's going to do. And it should pull back. And uh, so anyway, sector-wise, uh, you know, a couple of them, well, actually about three of them want to pull back. Only one of them is a two-bar, that's the XLB. Uh, the rest of them, nothing telling me it wants to go higher. That tends to, to match what we're seeing over in uh, the uh, indexes. And so that all seems to jive. Uh, let's take a look at the ox markets real quick. See if there's anything special there. So the first thing I want to look at is the dollar. See what it did today. And consolidation, nothing special there. Let's and well that all we've already looked at. Let's move on to the bonds. Let's see what they did. I know that they flipped around today and went higher. So they testing in. We were talking about trying to test into this 130.19. Gets the 130.39, closes at 130.23, so it's into the resistance zone, into the big volume bar. So this is the test. So tomorrow we'll see if, in fact, this can push. So it, it has set up now to try to test to the top of this big volume bar. And that test, of course, uh, 132.49. So if it so if it if it starts to push tomorrow and the market tries to pull back, you know, that could give it another little boost and shoot it up towards that number. Still think it's probably going to fail on the bounce, but that's, you know, that's a different story. And if we look at the weekly, you can see why I think that. You had volume pushing on the way down, but you're coming into a huge bar. So it's pretty hard to break that thing down. You actually came into a decent bar here, uh, but uh, not enough not enough juice into this one. So now you get into bounce. And so if you take the bounce and take the top, that bounce, wherever it comes to, 
you know, say it goes a little bit higher, sets up the ABCD structure to do what? Come test that low. And that looks to be what it's going to try to do. So that would be a retest regen off this bar, right, and set up potentially the next move back up uh, if, in fact, it's going to set up that way. But we don't know that yet, and we'll see how that plays out. If we look at the monthly, and the reason I spend so much time on bonds is, you know, bonds to me are a big driver of the equity markets. Um, and so if this does come back in and test down to here, well, actually it wouldn't be there, but it would be, where is that price point? On the weekly, it's 120. So if we go back here, 120 would take you to about here. So anyway, that would be a failed breakout. And so on the monthly, if it if it tests and closes lower, so you know bonds bonds are going to be a good tell this month, um, and it looks to me like it, it's interesting because if you think about it, the month's almost over, right? And it looks like they're going to hold it. So so now now that I'm saying all of this and thinking about it all, this is going to hold this month. So you get a breakout an immediate retest and regenerate bullish which says what which says it wants to go higher but if we look at the weekly the weekly says we're probably going to bounce more than likely fell and come back and I shouldn't say that yet because this is Wednesday let me see we're doing 27.4 so that's uh, three into that gets us about eight point 8.6 or something so 16 more 17 more that would be 34 44 and we did so yeah so it's not gonna have the volume so you're coming back up on lighter volume and you're probably not gonna have as much volume as the top of this bar so that does look like it's gonna fail so going back to the whole scenario here one more time it does look like this thing's gonna bounce it's going to fail, it's going to come back, it's going to test, it's probably going to hold and then bounce again and more than likely hold on a second retest regen of that same area. If it does that, these bonds are going even higher, which is kind of crazy to think, but uh, that's kind of the way they're trying to set up. Of course, you know, there's a bunch of ifs. We'll see how it actually sets up as we get farther down the road. Uh, but it's always useful to kind of look out and see what's happening. Uh, let's take a quick look at silver and see what it did. It was up. Yeah, when you look at it here, it's not very impressive. doesn't mean much to me. Let's look at the Moonies. I haven't looked at them in a while. Uh, pretty good sell-off on those guys. A little bounce. That looks like it wants to go lower. Let's look at the high-quality corporate bonds. So they fill their gap. And... They could bounce a little bit more, but I don't see anything special there either. Let's see what the junk bonds look like. They had a pretty good rally going, and they continue. These guys are going back up. Now, you know, this looks extremely impressive, right, until you pull over the weekly and you see how far they fell. So, yeah, they're getting a big bounce, but it's in the context of a larger, you know, consolidation at best, maybe downtrend. So corporate, uh, the corporate uh, junk bond is not that great. Um, good, good, impressive rally now, but uh, still overall not that great. Gold gets a bounce up, doesn't really do that much. You know, gold, gold's in an interesting scenario. Let's pull over the weekly again. You know, we had talked about gold once before, and we talked about it trying to hold on the retest region. Where was that? Well, it was up here, right? And it had held up until last week. Right, and when you break down like that, what you really want to see is you want to see it immediately come back up in there if it's going to. If it doesn't, you know, the odds of it trying to drift lower become increasingly, you know, higher. That test, if it's going to test lower, is probably down here. Um, we're not quite there. We're kind of in no man's land right now. So, you know, if you're trying to play with gold, uh, gold is just in no man's land. Let me look at the GDX and uh, the, the small miners. And so if we look at these guys, so GDX. Hmm. So 
So that's just coming back into the big bar down and it's trying to hold. Looks a lot better in gold. <laughs> um, yeah, it actually looks better. Let's put it on the daily and see what it looks like. Also looks better. Yeah, maybe these gold stocks are trying to tell us something. Let's look at the small cap. GDXJ. No, it also looks pretty good. Well, gold stocks don't look that bad, actually. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's look overseas right quick. So if we start here with Australia, Australia is up there testing the tops. Uh, that thing has had a tremendous run. I mean, talk about a run. Over the highs, it's kind of running out of juice now, but uh, just, you know, what can you say? You know, huge run higher. Uh, the Sensex really not doing much. Brazil, uh, Brazil still hanging. Uh, looks like it wanted to try to trade higher, still trying to. If we go over to uh, Taipei, uh, nice big spike up volume after they came back from uh, vacation, uh, New Year's. Uh, same thing with the Singapore index, uh, still pushing towards highs. Japan's been pushing higher. Actually, Japan gets a two bar reversal, it looks like. That one's going to try to come back. So, Japan looks like it's going to try to come in tonight. Uh, the Korean, the Kospi, testing the highs, got volume, looks like it's going to try to push higher. Hong Kong, uh, we're starting to get volume again. I have to try to go back and find some volumes for those missing ones. That's well, nice. Still no volume, or they're still hanging at the highs. H cap shares, let's see what those look like. Uh, still hanging at the highs. We go to Europe. Uh, Germany looked like it wanted to try to pull back last night. Hung up there again. And yeah, it's about done. It's going to try to pull back. FTSE, same thing. CACs, also same thing. So, you know, overseas markets really. Uh, and not giving us any kind of uh, a different view here uh, from what I'm seeing uh, in the domestic indexes. And so with that, let's think about our final thoughts. You know, when you, you get a market that moves up as much as this one has, you're going to run out of juice at some point. The way you want to run out of it is just like this one's doing, and that is you go over the highs, you come back under it, you have a little bit more volume. So there were enough buyers up there of interest to suggest that you can actually test it some more. At the same time, you know, given the extension here, odds are pretty decent, especially when we, you know, wrap in the foreign markets, wrap in the sectors, odds are pretty decent. We'll probably get a pullback tomorrow. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be that deep. You know, maybe we get 10, 15 points here max. Um, I would think probably 10 to 12. But that's probably all it's going to give you. And then that's going to set up another little ABCD structure probably uh, inside the one that's here to take it higher. And so if you look at that and just, a, just take this... Yeah, that probably wouldn't be fair to take that one because I don't think here, let me make certain here before I do this. So we had a high of 210130, 2100. Yeah, but that one went higher. So you really don't have that. So I can't, that, you know, my ABCD schooling will not allow me to do that. So it's really from here up to wherever it comes back to, right, to set up the next move. And you've also got the one that's already in effect from here, right, that measures to about 21, I think about 32 or so. So you kind of have this one inside. If you get a pullback here, you know, that sets up a larger ABCD structure potentially uh, to take it even higher as it tries to, you know, finish this one out as well. So, you know, I, I, I'm not bearish at all. Uh, I do think that there's a decent probability we get some sort of re, uh, retrace yesterday, uh, tomorrow. That's kind of where I'm at. 
Uh, no viewer questions tonight, so I'll just skip that and we'll call it a night. Uh, thanks a, a bunch for joining me. You know, folks, uh, there are a lot of things on the site uh, that's free. There's some that, uh, you know, you have to pay for. Of course, I try to make those things that are most valuable payable. Um, you know, got to, got to, you know, put the, the, the heat on and, and keep the lights on. So uh, if you want to see what we have to offer at TA Today, it's pretty easy. You know, just pop over to the site, hit this Get Started button. And that will bring you down here and you can kind of see, you know, what it is we do and how we do it. And, you know, we, we've kind of broken it down into, you know, what, what are you trying to do? It's, it's from your perspective. What are you trying to do? Well, these are the things that we have in place to do those things for you. So, you know, check it out. Uh, I, I welcome your business, of course. Uh, I think I have a lot to offer. It, no matter what it is that you're trying to do, whether you're a day trader, whether you're a long-term trader, no matter what it is, uh, come check out uh, our services. Some of them are extremely cheap, such as the Retirement Advisory Service. Some of them are a little bit more expensive, but all of them quite affordable. And if you haven't seen, you know, the testimonials, you know, you really should. And I'll just pop down here. There's a link down here at the bottom. Um, testimonials. If you pop over to it, you know, these are uncensored. I, I don't have any bad ones. You know, maybe people just don't write when things are bad, and I hope I'm not encouraging you to write <laughs> something bad now, but, you know, most of these pretty encouraging, and, and you know, it, it makes me feel good to do business in the way I do it, uh, such that, you know, people feel good about what I do, whether they can afford the service or whether it doesn't work for them, there's usually kind words and I really appreciate that. I do my best to serve you as I would want to be served, you know, and to give you everything and then some. So check us out and have yourself a great night. I'll see you next time. Take care. Good night.